Hi, this is Flash MP, and this is Flash MP's guide to July 7th CCTV. I'm going to start off with uh, all the things that are wrong with the loot and image, why this is not proof of anything. Certainly, it's not a valuable piece of evidence and would be, not be admissible in court. Probably start with the most glaring things that are wrong with the loot and image. Firstly, being Jermaine Lindsay's left leg. There's a lot wrong with this. There's a triangular chunk missing from his left hip on the top of his thigh. This is very unusual and obviously is not normal for a human being and especially at the angle as well. You can also see the top of his thigh is obstructing or is in front of the bottom of his jacket and you should get a clearer view there. You see the top line of his thigh clearly is in front of his jacket and is not underneath like you would expect. Also you can see that there's a lot of merging between the, the plastic bag that he's holding and his right knee. It's generally a very, very messy area and it could be because the people who fabricated this image had, had problems using the original image of Jermaine Lindsay because it's probably composed of a lot of images that were taken on other days, not on July the 7th. And this is why you probably have the problem with the legs because Jermaine Lindsay is obviously holding a plastic bag and they may have only been able to use the the upper body part and not being able to use the legs perhaps because the legs weren't walking in the right direction for this image or they didn't have the right resolution or they may have just not looked right and would have looked even more of a hatchet job than this looks there's a lot of fusion there between his thigh and his right knee between that and the plastic bag there's also a sort of another triangular chunk missing at the bottom where his ankle should be and this again is not normal it's not a normal characteristic for a human being Okay, and on to the next anomaly, which is Mohammed Sadiq Khan's lower left arm, or lack of it. Mohammed Sadiq Khan is the man standing behind Jermaine Lindsay in the white hat. It doesn't appear to have a lower left arm in this image. Some people have said that his arms folded across his stomach or um, is somehow bent behind Jermaine Lindsay. But as you can see um, in both those close-up images, there's no elbow that's visible. And if you look behind, you'll see the glass wall where the reflection should be, or whether that's an authentic reflection is unknown, probably unlikely because there's no left arm there, so it's, it's unlikely that Mohammed Sadiq Khan was standing there on this day. As you can see, there's a glass wall, and it comes down behind, and what you see is Mohammed Sadiq Khan's left arm come down, stopping what is essentially just a straight line. It's just There's no elbow there at all, and what you'll see behind is the glass wall at Luton Station. And again, this is not really not not normal, not a normal characteristic for a human being and is entirely impossible. Okay, then on to the next anomaly in the Luton image. This is the anomaly associated to Hasib Hussein and this is the dodgy reflection. What you see on the left is Hasib Hussein in the foreground and then this is the background of Hasib Hussein on the right and it essentially looks like someone's taken a stamp or taken the image on the left and tried to stamp it onto the glass wall behind to make it look like a reflection. Again, this is, this is a, quite a serious anomaly and it's entirely impossible. Light does not behave in this way and reflections do not behave in this way. You should see a, literally a mirror image of the other side of Hasib Hussein's legs and the right leg should be in front of the left leg in the reflection. Okay, then let's move on to the next anomalies in the Luton image. The next anomalies are associated to Shazad Tamweer, who's on the furthest right in the image in the dark hat. There seems to be some sort of impact on the bus stop here. It's very wobbly, it seems to have been disrupted in some way, and that is not present in, or is not the same in the dummy run image, which is taken from supposedly the same camera at the same angle. And as you can see, the, the bus stop is, is a lot straighter, very solid. It's also important to note in the dummy run image that Mohammed Sadiq Khan is wearing the same hat that he's wearing in the Luton image. Also, it's important to note that in the top right-hand corner, there's um, some kind of code, um, perhaps another kind of time and date code, but that's missing from the other image, supposedly July 7th. Also, this image seems to show less of the bus stop than the other image. The police may not be, have been complicit in the falsifying of the Luton image, however, it is quite unlikely, seeing as it was presented in such a way by the police. Okay, then the next image is of Hasib Hussein. 
this has been used again like the loot and image in a lot of media reports, a lot of mainstream media reports as proof or as um, evidence that the men were in London on July 7th and were able to carry out the bombings but this image is proof of nothing really, it's, it's, it's unknown where this image was taken, there's no time or date code the other f three men should be around him and none of them are visible. This image is really proof of nothing and, and shouldn't be used in any kind of report, mainstream media or not, to substantiate any claims that these men were responsible for the bombing. Also, this uh, image seems to contradict police claims that they travelled together. The other three men should be visible around him, but they're not. Again, this, this has no time or date code. It's impossible to tell when it was. The, the question should be asked why are the police presenting this image as proof, why are they so eager to put Hasib Hussein and the other men in the frame? Okay, then the next image is again Hasib Hussein alone at Boots at King's Cross Station. This image again has been used as proof that Hasib Hussein was in London on July 7th. However, this image does not have a proper time and date code. The time and date code that you can see, the one in the bottom left corner, is one that was added by the police for a press conference by the looks of it at the same time as the writing at the bottom of the image Hasib Hussein at King's Cross Station. The one on the right is one that I knocked up in about five minutes flat. It's not a cut and paste but it didn't take me very long at all and it wasn't very hard. And uh, what this indicates or what this might indicate is that Hasib Hussein was in London on another day that wasn't July the 7th and that the security services have basically used images of him on that day to fabricate evidence and to try and bolster the claims that these men were responsible for the bombings when it's clear that there's very little proof that they entered London. To go more in depth in that would take a long time and we don't have time in this video. And what I was basically trying to show in this video is that even though these images have been used in mainstream media reports they're really not proof of much and any report that contains these images is inaccurate and that issue needs to be addressed. I was also trying to show that the evidence is available such as the IDs that were found at the scene and the papers that were found at the scene. It's very important if you don't have any CCTV. Of course some people are going to say that DNA was found at the scene and the papers were found at the scene and surely that's conclusive proof. It's not impossible to plant DNA at a scene, it's not impossible to plant small fragments of flesh and bone at a scene. It's not difficult. It's definitely not difficult to plant IDs, especially as there are anomalies in in the uh, the way the IDs were found as well. So I can't go into that today, but it's not impossible. So yeah, anyway, hope people enjoyed that.